A Nature article published January 29, 2020 by French scientist Paul Lebeard, claiming to have finally created metallic hydrogen, is an important milestone for pressure physics research. As I mentioned in my previous video on this topic, metallic hydrogen was first theorized back in 1935 by Eugene Wigner and Dr. Hillard Bell Huntington. Wigner and Huntington based their idea on what is called a bravais lattice, which is an infinite array of discrete points generated by a set of discrete translation. Basically, it is a pattern that repeats itself throughout the structure, like graphene, for instance. They thought that this was true for any element, including hydrogen, and went on to calculate how this could happen. They concluded, based on a lot of calculations, that hydrogen would assume a Bravis lattice at around 25 gigapascals. Fast forward to today, and that number may be closer to 425 gigapascals. Scientists have given 85 years to the research of this topic. But why metallic hydrogen is so important? Hello everyone, Subject Zero here. When you think hydrogen, the first thing that might come to your mind are rockets, because that is one of the main fuels used in rocket propulsion. You could also think of hydrogen for transportation with fuel cell technology, fusion as means of electricity generation, or the hydrogen bomb. Creating metallic hydrogen would certainly revolutionize all of the above, primarily rocket propulsion. The importance of metallic hydrogen is mainly based on its theoretical properties that were predicted by Wigner and Huntington, as well as other scientists. Once the metallic form of hydrogen is achieved, in theory, it would be a metastable substance, meaning that if you release the pressure, it will remain in the metallic form. This means you could load 10 times more fuel due to its stability. In practical terms, it can either reduce the size of the rocket or increase the payload. In real life, the tank size would be something like this. More fuel means higher specific impulse. At best, with current hydrogen-oxygen technology, rockets' specific impulse is around 460 seconds. With metallic hydrogen, this number is more than tripled to more or less 1400 seconds enabling single-stage rockets. As a matter of fact, the energy released by this fuel is 20 times that of hydrogen-oxygen, or about 216 megajoules per kilogram against 10. The problem is that, with that amount of energy being released, we currently don't have rocket chamber technology that can endure that amount of heat generated. One solution would be to simply dilute metallic hydrogen with water or liquid hydrogen to reduce the combustion temperature. This would make sure that the temperature at the chamber will not exceed 3800 Kelvin. At this level, you will get approximately 1120 seconds of specific impulse, which is over 18 minutes of acceleration. Taking into account that the average space shuttle or rocket acceleration is 20 meters per second square, that would give us a final velocity of 22,400 meters per second, or 80,640 kilometers an hour. With that final velocity, we could drop the time it takes to go to Mars from 6 months to only 28 days, considering its closest distance, or a little over 3 months, considering the average distance. I know this is highly speculative, but it is a no-brainer. If you can put more fuel in the same volume, it will have an impact in travel times. Nevertheless, there is another technology that is not so obvious where metallic hydrogen can make a huge impact. I am talking about superconductors and fusion. The reason being, metallic hydrogen would create the only superconductor at 272 Kelvin and a really powerful one. Most superconductors only work near zero Kelvin. The first observation of superconductivity happened in 1911 by Dutch physicist Heike Karmelijn while cooling mercury to 4.2 Kelvin. As simple as I can explain, superconductors allow for electrons to move without any resistance. 
Even though protons arranged in crystalline layers facilitate electron movement, there still should exist some resistance from electrons repelling each other. How this happens was a mystery until 1957 when John Bardeen, Leon Cooper and John Schieffer developed a theory to explain such phenomenon. It begins with the assumption that there is some attraction in between electrons, or at least enough to overcome the Coulomb repulsion. However, it is hard to get electrons close enough to each other, hence why most superconductors only work in extremely low temperatures. Think of it this way. The closer two atoms are to each other, the more likely it will be for electrons to be also. In a superconductor, something interesting happens with electrons, and that is, they pair. Something called Cooper pairs. In a crystalline atomic arrangement, electrons passing by attract the atoms around it, causing the lattice to deform. This in turn attracts electrons nearby, making them pair up. This movement of electrons in its layers is facilitated by how easy and freely the atoms can vibrate. How much they can vibrate is tied to how big the atom mass is. The smaller the atom, the easier and more freely it can vibrate, facilitating the pairing of electrons. This is confirmed by hydrides, such as lanthanum decahydride. When exposed to 170 gigapascals, it becomes superconducting at only 250 Kelvin. Although the pressure is enormous, it proves how hydrogen may be the best superconductor. Under a lot of pressure, metallic hydrogen is predicted to assume a hexagonal closed packed structure, much like graphene. This in part is one of the reasons for its predicted metastability. If metallic hydrogen is indeed metastable, having a superconductor at 272 Kelvin would eliminate a lot of the problems tokamak reactors have. Not only that, but it can also be used as fuel for fusion reactions, since the biggest problem in fusion is to make hydrogen atoms heat each other. Currently, tokamaks have to generate enormous magnetic fields to force atoms as close as possible to increase the chance of them heating each other. Having a small pellet of metallic hydrogen would greatly increase that chance. A different method could be applied using lasers or accelerated particles. One such experiment that applies this concept has recently had good results. It is called Lattice Confinement Fusion, and I will talk about it in my next video. Alright folks, that's it, we're done here.